Hi everyone, Monique here with Little Jim's Creations One. Today we are going to be making an extra small dog sweater and we're going to be working it from the bottom up and guess what? It's seasonal. So stay with us and we'll get right into that. We'll be back in just a moment. here with Little Gems Creations 1. Today we are making a snowman dog sweater size extra small. We're going to be working it from the bottom up. So you're going to need a size 5 millimeter crochet hook. This is one of the ones that I did with uh, polymer clay. Now just if you decide to do these, they are great, but I went too high. Don't go this high. It's very annoying when you go this high. But I hate throwing things out, so I suffer through it. You're gonna need a pair of scissors. You're gonna need a darning needle. You're gonna need blue, white, a little bit of black, even though this is a ginormous ball. You just need a little bit of it and a little bit of orange. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna start with our blue. So this is size extra small. Extra small fits a three to five pound dog. Okay, so I'm gonna put the yarn over my hook, cross it, so the tail goes over top. Then I'm gonna put my yarn over, and we're gonna chain 40. Two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. Okay, so now without twisting our chain, we're going to catch that first chain and we're gonna slip stitch in there, okay? Then we're gonna chain up three. One, two, three. Now, we are going to do double crochets in every chain, so we should have 40 double crochets, okay? So, to do a double crochet, sorry. To do a double crochet, you are going yarn over into that chain, grab your yarn, pull through, yarn over through two loops, yarn over through two loops. Okay, so let's do it again. Yarn over into the chain, grab your yarn, pull through, yarn over, go through two loops, yarn over, go through two loops. So come back when you've done 40 double crochets around, okay? Okay, so we're back. I have done my 40 double crochets. So now to connect, I'm gonna go into that third chain that we did for our chain three up, okay? There we go, we're gonna slip stitch. Now we're gonna chain three up. Okay, now this is where we're gonna get a little bit different than our other tutorials. Cause normally with my other dog sweater tutorials this size, I do half double crochets and we're already doing double crochets. So now we are looking to get the same um, 
it's called ribbing that you would get from a knitted pattern and we're going to do that with crochet so this is how you do that so we're going to do another double crochet so we're going to go around our hook but instead of going into the stitch we are going around that front post okay we're going to catch our yarn pull it through and do our double crochet now for the next stitch yarn over we're going behind the post catch our yarn through two through two next stitch we're going at the front around the post through two through two and the next stitch we're going behind through two through two now if you can see we're starting to get some ridging here so as you do more you'll see what I mean so we're gonna do this all the way so front of the post with our double crochet and then back of the post double crochet we're going to do this around for our 40 stitches and then we're going to join and we'll do the same thing the next row we would go where we've gone in the front we're going to go in the front of that post and in the back and we're going to do this so this is our foundation row so that's going to count as one this is two and we're going to do a third row so do those three rows and then meet me back and we're joining each round with the slip stitch okay so yarn over we're going around the front post double crochet yarn over around the back of that post double crochet front back and you're gonna do that for this row and you'll do that for the next row for a total of three rows so you do that and come back okay so we have done our three rows and you see what I mean about the ribbing so it kind of looks like the bottom of a sweater or um, like a hat the bottom of a hat okay so now we're gonna do a color change so if you've slip stitched like I've done let me find the end of my white here okay if you've done a slip stitch like I've done which is habit just take it out because when we do a color change we do our slip stitch with our new color so we're on our last stitch we're going into the stitch chain three and then we're going to start our new color which is white okay so we're going to join like that we're going to chain up two okay now at this point i'm going to cut my blue we don't need that until we get to the neck we are going to tie these not too too tight but tight enough <laughs> isn't that helpful okay now we are going to do a total of 10 rows so we've got three now we're going to switch to half double crochet and we're going to do 10 rows now if you've watched any of my other dog sweater patterns you'll know that in order not to have kind of a diagonal line where I do my join on my first one I join in the chain in the chain two and on the second one I join in that first stitch and the reason I do this is so that I don't have that I, I don't know I seem to have a line that goes sideways instead of straight so that's how I solve that problem um, the other thing is I was gonna say because I forgot to say it earlier um, this is four ply worsted weight acrylic yarn this is a yarn I get at Walmart and 
it's just those big balls. They have them usually at the end of Christmas. They bring out these like ginormous balls. Like, look at how huge this is. And I get a huge ball of all the neutral colors and then I go and supplement with color colors um, throughout the year. So because I do do a lot of orders. I have an Etsy store in case you don't know. So if you do find this, this sweater too difficult but you do just adore it, you can go to my Etsy store and just purchase it. So, but I always like to show people how to do things so that they can do it themselves. Um, while I, I do do my crocheting and knitty, knitting as a hobby, I also make um, jewelry. I do it as a hobby for a while there. I was using it to supplement my income, but I have uh, since then gotten a new job and I don't have to supplement my income at all. So now it's totally just for fun. And I like it just being for fun again. But having said that, dog sweaters were some of my best sellers at craft sales. Um, I'm almost always selling a dog sweater or dog toy or dog booties or you name it because it's not something a lot of people see at craft sales. I mean, they may now because you're learning how to do this and if you're a crafter and you want to have a little bit of extra, you know, you might want to do this for your craft sale, which I'm totally good about. This is just a pattern I've made up. Um, I would appreciate if you didn't sell it on Etsy, but at a local craft sale, fly at her. Okay, so make sure you have 40 stitches. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. Okay, so then this slip stitch, I'm going into the chain. Next slip stitch, I go into the stitch. So this gives us four rows. We are doing a total of 10. So I'm not gonna make you watch me do this. If you haven't had a chance yet, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Um, and we're gonna do our 10 rows and then we'll come back. Doesn't that look cute already? Okay, so we've got our three rows of ribbing and then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So we have 10 rows total. We did our slip stitch, we're gonna chain up two, one, two. Now we are only gonna half double crochet 20 stitches, okay? So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so we did 20 stitches. That counts as one row. We're gonna chain up two. We're gonna turn our work and go back along those 20 stitches. We're gonna do this for a total of six rows. So that counts as one. We're gonna do five more rows. When you've done that, just on those 20 stitches, you come back to me. Okay, so I've done my six rows. So see? One, two, three, four, five, six. I pulled my loop big. I'm gonna leave a bit of a tail. Now very gently, I'm gonna pull that tail through that loop. I'm not pulling it tight because we're gonna have to pick out this knot later, okay? Now I'm going over to this side. 
I'm going to reattach my white, just pulling it through. So I put it on my hook. I pull through. I'm chaining up two. And I'm going to catch that tail in my first half double crochet. Okay, that's just to give it a bit of an anchor. And then I'm going to hide it later. So we're going to do 20 half double crochets. So this is two. And the chain does not count. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Okay, now we're going to start our decreases for our legs. So, I chained up two. I turned my work. We are going to do this together. Okay, so yarn over your hook into that first stitch, grab your yarn, pull through. Yarn over your hook into the next stitch, grab your yarn, pull through. We have five loops. One, two, sorry, this is a bad crochet hook. One, two, three, four, five loops. Yarn over, go through all five. So we have just decreased one stitch there but we've made it nice and padded so that when the dog's legs rub up against that, it's not gonna hurt the dog, but it's gonna give it some extra padding so that it won't wear through. So that counts as one. This row, we're gonna have 18 stitches because we're gonna decrease at both ends. So that counts as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So now that we're doing our 17th stitch, we know that these last two stitches, we're going to make it into one. So yarn over into the stitch, grab your yarn. Yarn over into the next stitch. Grab your yarn. Five loops. One, two, three, four, five. Yarn over, go through all five loops, and that was your 18th stitch. You're gonna chain up two, and you're gonna go right into a decrease. Turn your work, and you're gonna do this until you're down to 10. So you do that and come back. Okay. So I just did my last stitch. I'm going to do my slip stitch into that chain three. Okay. And then I'm going to snip my yarn. And put my tail through the loop and pull tight. So now we need to hide our threads. May as well get that done before we go to the next step. Okay, so darning needle, turn our work inside out. Oh, don't let your rings get caught in your yarn. Okay, so this is just a quick 
I'll show you how I hide my threads. So I also do cross stitch. Well, I did. I don't haven't done it for years, but and one of the things they teach you in cross stitch is so that you don't have a whole bunch of knots at the back of your work. You do what's called back stitching. So, sorry, I had to pull my yarn right off. So I go, my yarn is coming out here. I'm gonna go just a bit behind it and then go past it. And then I just do that through stitches. My stitches are never going to the front of my work. It's always at the back. And I just go until I have no yarn left. And then sometimes I go backtrack, whatever. Okay, give it a snip. And there we go. So I do tie knots when it's at an end, like I did here. But then I still hide the threads, and I just do it the same way. Okay. So, and one of the things I hate about knitting and crocheting is hiding the darn threads. So I will do everything in my power to make as few threads as possible to have to hide. So that's why I did that join, you know, where we didn't make a, a tight knot in that one area and yeah, stuff like that so that we can um, have fewer threads that we have to hide. It's just not the fun part of it. If you haven't had a chance, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. And leave a comment. Let me know what other tutorials you'd like to see. I do have like um, some short videos, like three and four and five minute videos that are just a collection of the different sweaters I've made over the years. So if there's one you want to see, like I recently had one of the subscribers ask me to make my minion sweater. And I got on that as quickly as I could and yeah, so if there's any in my collections that you want to see how to make. Now, I never make anything exactly the same twice. Although I can now that I've done the videos, right? <laughs> um, but I'll get you pretty close to where you need to be. Because like even this pattern, this pattern I have just made up over the years. I've never actually even written it down. It's just something I've done. I got a little dog. She's about eight years old now, maybe a little bit older. And it's quite funny because my husband said, oh no, we're never going to dress the dog because we've always had big dogs. We're not going to dress the dog. It's got fur. And then one day, the little dog is wearing a sweater, a store-bought sweater. Ooh, I couldn't believe it. And I said, where did she get that sweater? My husband said, well, she was shivering. I said, oh really, she was shivering. But she's got fur. <laughs> anyway, since then, I've been making dog sweaters for her and her friends. And yeah, then I started bringing them to craft sales thinking, hey, I'll give this a try, see if that works. And it really, really did. And then I had someone commission me to make a sweater for their pet. Their pet pot belly pig piglet. Well, it was just the cutest thing. Oh my goodness. It's in one of my videos. Um, I couldn't believe how sweet it looked. And it was with my dragon scale. Um dog sweater and I didn't have to adapt it at all it uh, fit just like that just like the way I make it so that was really neat but yeah and then if I am looking on Pinterest because you know all of us crafters have to look on Pinterest and I see a stitch that someone's using quite often it's things that people use for hats that I look at and I'm like, oh, I wonder if I could incorporate that into a dog sweater. 
and then I try it and it either works or it doesn't. Okay, see there, already done. Okay, so this is the base of our sweater. Isn't that cute already? Just like that would be fun. Okay, I'm gonna put my pin away before I lose it. So now, to make this a snowman, we're gonna need our black. Oh, I forgot to tell you, keep two discard things of white. So, um, cause we're gonna need those for the eyeballs. Okay, so we cross our yarn. We're gonna chain two. Okay, now going back into that first chain and catching our tail, we're gonna do six single crochets in that first stitch. So two, three, four. Oh, this is why you don't put the handle so high. Five and six. Then we're gonna attach to that first. Then we're gonna chain two. Sorry, no, chain one. Then we're gonna do two single crochets in each stitch around. One, two in one stitch. Three, four in another stitch, five, six in another stitch, seven, eight in another stitch, nine, ten in another stitch, eleven, twelve. We're gonna slip stitch into that first stitch. I know it's very hard to see with the black. Oh, and I just lost my stitch. Oh, what have I done? Stop it. Okay, slip stitch into that first stitch. Okay, make a long loop. You're gonna leave a long tail. Leave a long tail, because we're gonna use it to sew our eyeball on. So put it your tail through your loop, pull tight. Now, the center one, because we caught the tail, we're gonna pull it tight and then see, there's no center. Okay, so that's one eyeball. Now we'll do exact same for the next eyeball. So, okay, cross your yarn. Let's move that out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Cross your yarn, yarn through through. So that's two chains. Catching your tail, so kind of put your tail in the way, you're going to go into that first chain, pull your th thread through, yarn over through two loops. So that's one single crochet. We're going to do six. Two, three, four, five, six, slip stitch into that first stitch, chain up one. Now we're gonna do two in each. One, two, until we get to 12. Three, four, Five, six, halfway there, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Slip stitch into that first stitch. 
long tail. Put your tail through the loop, pull tight. Take your tail from the center. So see how I have quite a big hole there so you can see the light shining through. Now I'm gonna pull on that tail because we caught it and see now there's no light shining through. Okay, we need our darning needle. Ooh. By the way, this is my crochet and knit go bag. I will put a link in the description. I love it. I bring it everywhere. I don't even know where I heard about making such a thing, but I just love it. Okay, so taking that middle thread, we are just going to weave it in. Make sure you do your back stitching. And if your hole did not go tight enough, this would be the point where you could use this thread to uh, sew up the hole, okay? So we just want that nice and tight. We're gonna snip. This is the center thread only, okay? Now, to make our snowman look all twinkly, sparkly, starry-eyed, we are going to Take some of our scrap yarn, we're gonna go up through the middle, except that I sewed it till it was so tight I can't get my needle through. There we go. Okay, and we're just gonna put a single stitch near the top. We're gonna go in the back. We're gonna tie it, not too tight. We don't wanna distort our eyeball. Okay, so now we've got that. Trim so they don't show, but don't trim too short because we don't have anything to hide, so. There we go. That's one eyeball ready to get sewn on. Okay, so what we do to one, we do to the other. Take that center thread. And we are just gonna do our back stitches and make sure that center is nice and closed up right. And I never let my back thread go to the front. I always just put it through the stitches. Okay. Here we go. Now take your scrap piece of little yarn. Okay. Going from the middle, to not all the way to the end, but close to the end. And then tie it off at the back. Try and get your knot more towards the center than that long tail. Okay, so there are our eyeballs. Now, put that back there. We need our orange. Oops, there's me bumping the table again. Okay, so it's very simple. We're gonna chain uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so three of those chains are our chain up three. We're gonna do a double crochet in the first stitch. We're going to do another double. So two double crochets. Then we're going to do a half. Then we're going to do two. So we did two doubles, a half, we're going to do a single 
and another single. And catching our tail, we're just gonna do a slip stitch. Okay, then we're gonna cut our yarn. We're gonna leave it long though, cause we're gonna use it to sew. So long tail, pull through the loop. Okay, now we're gonna take our needle. We're gonna get rid of that first little tail. Just sew it in. Okay, so if you have any gaps anywhere, this would be where you deal with it. We're just gonna hide that thread. <laughs> There we go. Good enough. Okay. So now placement. We can go like that in our little nose. Can you see? There we go. And then we'll put our mouth down here. So, uh, pins. Uh, here we go. Some pins. So, I'm going to say, okay, first we want to make sure that our holes are even. Okay, and you can put them however you want. So if you want uh, both of those going that, or if you want both of the whites going different ways, whatever, I like them kind of going the same way. And then I'm gonna just pin. Now, if you're wondering where I get these super long pins, they're quilting pins. I'm also a quilter. super long and I love them. Okay, so those two are on and then I kind of want my nose on a slant. Okay. There we go. Okay, and then we'll just put a little smiley face down here. So we're gonna start We're gonna start stitching and we're just gonna go in as if we were crocheting. So we're gonna go in the stitch and catch the white on the way by. So catch the white, go in the stitch. Okay. In the white, catch the stitch. In the white, catch the stitch. We're just going to do this all the way around. And I think this is called a whip stitch. I'm not sure. It's what I do. <laughs> Ouch! And I poke myself. Don't poke yourself. It's never good. Move that. And I just want to make sure I have it down all around. Make sure you're not catching the other side because you want your little furry friend to be able to put their body in there. And we're 
we're just gonna go all the way around. Right back to where we started. Now I'm just gonna go into the back of my work, pull it tight, and now I am going to, okay, so you see in the back here that you can see the black. So I'm just going to catch some of that black and some of my white, and then I'm going to do a knot. So I make a loop. I go in once, I go in twice, and then I pull tight. And I'm going to do that again. Okay, make a loop, go through once, go through twice, pull tight, and you never cut where you've knotted, you always do a few stitches. Okay, and then I'm going to snip. Now I'm going to keep my thread there because I might be able to use that to make the mouth. So there we go. And we got one eyeball on. Now let's go do the other one. Now, you know what? Your eyeballs aren't going to be perfect. Your nose isn't going to be perfect. No one is perfect. I wouldn't sweat the small stuff. So just do the best you can. There we go. So if you haven't had a chance, Hit that like and subscribe. That's how I grow my YouTube channel, having subscribers and um, getting comments and improving all the time. I think I finally have a fairly good camera angle. Next thing I'm going to get, I think with Christmas coming up, I may ask for a microphone so that there's no distortion with my uh, audio. But, you know, small steps, small baby steps. Okay, so I'm at the point where I can take out my pin because nothing is going to be moving. And I kind of stick my fingers in where that leg hole is, just so that I don't catch the back of my work. Oh, and sometimes I go in where it's difficult. Sorry, I keep moving this closer to me. So like I said, I think this is just whip stitch. So you're catching the white, you're going into the black. Catching in, and we're going all the way back to where we started. Oops. There we go. Then we're going to go into there. And now, maybe we'll do it through the top. We're just going to do like we did before. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There we go. So we're going to catch some white and black. Do a stitch. Do another stitch. Sorry, I keep pulling it towards myself. Now we got a loop. We are going to go in it once, go in it twice, pull tight. You never snip where you make a knot. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab some black and white again. Got a loop, through it once, through it twice, pull tight. Always do stitches before you snip. Okay, so there. Okay, so I'm going to keep the longest scrap of black for the smile. Okay, so there's the eyeballs. The eyeballs are on. 
Now we're going to sew on the nose. Same thing. Catch some white, catch some orange. Catch some white, catch some orange. I'm just going to do this all the way up. And I'm just putting my hand in there so I don't catch the back of my work, right? I don't... I don't want to accidentally sew my sweater shut. Sorry, long pause there. I was thinking about what I was doing and I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> that happens. I'm an artist. I'm allowed to have those brain cells. Okay, I can take out my pin. Bring it closer to me again. Okay. And then I'm just going to go in so that I can do my knot in the back. Okay. So grab some white, grab some orange, grab some white, grab some orange. Then I'm going to make a loop, go through it same direction twice, pull tight, never snip where you knot. And then again, twice. Pull tight, and then we're just going to do some stitches, and then we'll do a snip. Okay, so here we go. We have our nose and we have our eyes. Now these are about the same, so here's what we're going to do. We are, I like those lopsided grins. So we're gonna start on this side of the nose. Okay. And I'm gonna go, I'm holding the back of my thread. Okay, then I'm gonna go here. Then I'm gonna go here. Oops, don't catch the back of your thread. Okay, then I'm gonna go up. Okay, so you see how I have spaces? There's a method to my madness. Now, I wanna get back to where I was, okay? Because that's where I'm gonna tie my knot. So those spaces, I'm now filling in, okay? And I want it tight-ish, but not too tight. Okay. So I'm filling in the spaces now. I'm going to go back here. And when I get here, I'm going to do this. Oh, come on now. Don't give me grief. And there we go. So then on the other side, I have both ends. I am going to tie a knot. 
and then I'm going to tie another knot. Okay, so there's my fate, my smile. I'm just going to see if I can't wrap these a little bit in here. You don't want to go through too much white because the black will show through. So I just want to kind of catch it within. Hope you can see what I'm doing. There we go. It's just because my scraps were so small. Okay. I'm put my darning needle away. I'm trying to give those just a little snip. And there you have it. You now have a snowman. Um, dog sweater. Isn't it cute? I just love it. So thanks for watching. Hit the like and subscribe. And if you want notifications of when I do new videos, hit the little bell. Have a great day. Bye now.